Hello and welcome to the newsroom. I am Mary Kanu. The chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, Abdul Rashid Bawa, has disclosed that the commission has recovered $153 million from former Petroleum Minister Dezani Alison Madweke, who has been living in Britain since leaving office. He also said the anti graft agency recovered no fewer than 80 choice, 80 choice properties valued at $80 million. But the EFCC chief was quick to add that bringing the former minister to justice was still far from reality, given the fact that she was out of Nigeria's jurisdiction and acknowledging the challenges associated with bringing her home to face justice. The Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, has assured Nigerians that the federal government is handling the problem of insecurity in the country. The minister said the insinuation in some quarters that the government was clueless was unfounded, adding that the result of the government's efforts will soon be evident. He also said the government indeed knows the locations of kidnappers, adding that security agencies were only being careful to avoid civilian casualties. And the People's Democratic Party, PDP, says the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has no excuse whatsoever not to use the electronic direct transmission of results in the 2023 general elections and other future polls. This was disclosed in a statement signed on Tuesday by the National Publicity Secretary of the party, Kola Olubudion. According to the party, since INEC is in the position to deploy technology to conduct online registration of voters, which entails electronic transmission of voters' data to its central server, the Commission can also conduct an electronic transmission of results directly from the polling unit to its central server. And Madagascar has launched its COVID-19 vaccination program after receiving doses of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccines last week. The country's health minister was the first person to be vaccinated and Madagascar had initially touted a herbal tonic, COVID organics, as a cure for the virus despite the World Health Organization's warning against using untested remedies. But the island nation saw a spike in coronavirus cases in March and April, prompting the authorities to postpone schools reopening as learning institutions had been convinced converted to treatment centers. And Nigerian banks have reduced the amount of U.S. dollars customers can now pay into their domiciliary accounts from the previous $10,000 to $5,000 monthly. According to the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, its new directive is to discourage the strong appetite for the greenback, which has continued to rise. The, the new policy, however, does not apply to customers making electronic transfers, as well as oil and gas companies and dollar payments into government accounts. The Apex Bank had explained that the policy were part of efforts to simplify and improve the research and administration of diaspora remittances into Nigeria. And in foreign, Uganda's President Yoweri Museveni has taken the oath to officially begin a sixth term in office. Museveni arrived at the Kololo Independence Ground in the capital city, Kampala, on Wednesday for the swearing-in ceremony accompanied by First Lady Janet Museveni. After taking the oath, he then received the instrument of power from the chief judge of the country. Museveni won re-election with almost 59% of the vote in a disputed poll in January, with his main opposition, Bobby Wine, trailing with about 30%. And in sports manager of Rangers Football Club, Steven Gerrard has been named Scottish Football Writers Manager of the Year. Gerrard led Rangers to their first league title in 10 years during his third season at Ebrox. The club is currently on course to go the 2020 and 2021 season unbeaten and is currently 23 points clear of Celtic with just two matches remaining of the campaign. Well, that's all on the newsroom at this time. Please join us at the top of the hour for more updates. Many thanks for watching.